Good morning, everyone. Hope you're well today. Um, thank you very much for joining a webinar, um, Create, Formulate, Translate, all about the process of getting ready for translation. Um, the translation process can often be, and pardon the pun, uh, a bit of a foreign concept uh, for marketers. Um, so it's great to see that so many of you are interested in learning more about the secrets behind this process and the benefits you can receive by putting in place a supercharged, effective and streamlined process with the help of a translation partner. Um, this is actually um, part one of a series of two webinars that we're running on marketing translation. Um, today's session, we'll be looking at four key steps uh, marketing teams can take to launch a successful translation project. And um, session two, um, which takes place in three weeks time, um, on the 18th of May, we'll be looking in depth at a fifth and a most, the most complex step in the process, which is establishing an effective process for local market reviews. So to kick things off, um, I'd like to introduce uh, both Comtech and uh, ourselves. Uh, so my name is James. Uh, I'm a head operations here at Comtech Translations. I've been working in the translation industry for over nine years. Um, I'm a linguist myself, and I work closely with a lot of our clients to offer advice on streamlining and improving their approach to translations and getting everything set up before translation begins. Um, I'll be your main presenter for today. And I'm also joined by my colleague, Elliot Kane, um, one of our senior account managers, who will be helping to field any questions you will have and to help keep um, everything running smoothly today. Um, in terms of Comtech, um, we as a business, uh, we're an award-winning translation company uh, based in Leamington Spa in the UK. And for the past 40 years, we've supported our clients with producing effective marketing communications in many different languages. So before we start looking at how to prepare for translation, and to put in place an effective process for localization, we'd like to learn a bit more about how you've previously managed translation and what springs to mind when you hear the word translation. Um, we're going to be putting out a quick poll in a second to understand how you are currently handling translations. Um, and if you're able to select the option that applies best to you, that would be great. Um, if you select other, please feel free in the chat to share any details of how you're managing translations. Um, while you're doing that as well, um, for the second question, um, if you'd be able to share in the chat as well, um, one word that springs to mind when you think of translations, um, that would be great. Um, we'll have a look for those in a second. And while you're all doing that, um, please feel free throughout this webinar to share any questions or observations you have in the chat area. We will be having a time for Q&A towards the end of the webinar, and we'll be reviewing any questions submitted uh, during the, the webinar at the end. Um, and we look forward to um, answering any questions you have. Uh, we'll give you um, a f uh, 30 seconds or so to um, finish off um, answering uh, the questions. So we've got some really good answers uh, in the chat. So we have accuracy from Kirsten, 100% uh, correct there. Um, it's so important for translations to be accurate, um, not just um, in line with the industry um, industry terminology, but also company specific terminology as well. And that's something we're gonna be looking at a little bit later in the, um, in the, in the, in the webinar. Martin's also, Martin Hodgkinson has suggested challenging, if not done right. Um, you are absolutely correct. Um, we have seen translation go wrong ourselves and um, hopefully this webinar will give everyone some really good steps uh, and tips to kind of get ready for translation to preempt any, any challenges further down the line. Subjective preferential, that's a really good um, suggestion as well. Translation is subjective and um, it's therefore so important to make sure that everyone is kind of singing from the same hymn sheet um, to make the process move for everybody. Um, and some really good words as well, inclusive, multitasking, curiosity, um, really good words there, I think, to describe translation. I would definitely say translation is a very kind of a interesting and deep kind of, kind of area. Right, so thank you everyone for um, your, um, your, your inputs. Please continue to share them um, throughout, the, throughout the webinar. Um, I'm gonna have a quick look at what your poll. So um, 
the winning the winning vote was for a translation partner. So 30% of you are currently working with a translation agency, which is great. Um, hopefully um, today we can give you some extra tips to help you um, even make that process work with your partner even better. Um, great to see uh, some people are using internal resources, um, the clients local markets as well, really useful for capturing local preferences and also a mix of the above. Um, so uh, that's hopefully again you can pick up some tips from today and hopefully the people who aren't currently translating uh, we can, can we can show you some of the benefits that translation will bring. So thank you very much everyone for um, contributing to that quick poll. Right, so today uh, we're going to be looking at uh, four key steps to effectively prepare for translation. Um, these include what to look for when selecting a translation partner to support you, how to prepare content um, with translation in mind, um, the different approaches you'll need depending on different types of content and different levels of desired impact and engagement, um, including a look at the difference between translation and transcreation. And also, finally, what are some of the key resources you can work with your translation partner to put together to help you capture your style, tone and terminology preferences within your translations? Um, and alongside these steps, we'll also be looking at some of the benefits you can receive if you put all of these steps in place. Right, let's get started. So step one, the first step we're going to be looking at is how to find the right translation partner. As a translation company ourselves, we know that translation is complex and often one of the final steps in international marketing. Um, we know budgets are tight, turnaround times are tight, expectations are high, there's a lot riding on the translations and you yourselves as busy marketers are already strapped for time. We know how busy <laughs> marketing is. Um, so you need to have the confidence that you've chosen the right partner to help you. Um, not just a supplier, you want a partner. Um, here are a few things. Um, here are a few things to look for when you're considering um, your which translation partner to go for. Um, first of all, uh, what are their quality processes? How are they assuring quality in the, throughout the translation process? Um, two certifications to look out for are the ISO 9001 and the ISO uh, 17100 quality certification. Um, the last one is um, the translation specific industry qualification. And if a company has one or both of these, especially both, they are managing translations in a certain way that um, ensures quality throughout the process. So definitely keep an eye out for those. Um, also consider what services they offer. Do they offer much more than translation? Do they offer voiceover, subtitling, desktop publishing? Um, if yes, that will save you a lot of time and hassle because you can give all of those steps to the translation partner and they can manage the whole thing for you from end to end. Um, do they have experience in translating for your industry? Really important one here. And also do they have an experience of translating marketing content? Um, it's really important that they know your terminology and your industry and how you work and what's important to you. So definitely look out for signs and ask to see case studies and testimonials um, to show that. Um, Technology is a really important one. Uh, for example, do they use translation memory software, um, which offers a range of um, quality assurance um, benefits, for example, consistency of terminology, as well as time savings and cost savings, which are, of course, very helpful. Um, also, how do they select their translators? Um, the translation, sorry, the translation company should only be working with uh, native speaking, professionally qualified translators ideally based in market, um, and they should be handpicking translators according to um, your requirements based on their experience in your industry and in translating marketing content. Um, next, how will they be managing your requirements? So what process do they follow for, for translation and project management of translation? Um, what delivery times do they offer? Um, for example, generally translators translate between one and a half to 2,000 words per working day. Um, for more complex or creative content, this could be a bit longer, depending on um, the extra thinking time or creative time needed. Um, your translation partner should be able to offer you a range of solutions based on the content and delivery time to your budget. So definitely explore with them. Um, look for signs that they really want to offer lots of solutions. And finally, what are they like to work with? What's the feeling you get from the translation company? Um, do their values match yours? 
um, we find in translation collaborative relationships, especially and enforcing that from the very start is, is so helpful for, um, for, um, for translation of marketing content, which is so creative. Um, so you definitely look for, look for signs that your translation partner wants to get stuck in. For example, are they asking you loads of good questions? Are they uh, to understand what you need? Are they making practical recommendations? Are they offering different solutions, different service levels? Um, really see how much they're engaging with you. So that's step number one. Um, step two is um, about preparing content for translation. Um, so with a suitable translation partner now in place, um, hopefully, um, that will give you the reassurance you need to focus on your core role in marketing, which is creating great content and marketing that, of course. Um, over the next few slides, when we look at service levels, you will see that your ideas and concepts may need some level of adaptation to be relevant and engaging for overseas markets. Um, you might, for example, require a transcreation approach instead of translation. You might need a mix of both. Um, but at the same time, there are a few things that your copywriting team um, can do to make that your content as translation friendly as possible. And I'm just going to go through a few of those uh, right now. Um, the first one um, is adopting a localization mindset. So that sounds really simple, um, but it's, it's not necessarily. Um, we definitely recommend your copywriters being fully aware that this content is going to be used in all the different markets. Having that focus and that awareness that it's going to be used for a wider audience than just potentially the UK will really help them uh, make sure that the content is as inclusive as possible um, of all the different markets. Um, use clear English is really important. Um, we generally find concise, simple English is much better for translation. Um, obviously, um, lots of idioms and um, players on words have the equivalents in different languages, but using too many of them may confuse the translators and um, result in uh, all, all your local markets when they're approving the translations, they might not necessarily get the ideas. So um, try to keep things as consistent, as, as clear as possible. Um, the next point is on consistency. Um, so it's really important with um, when you're creating content to be consistent when it comes to terminology. So um, try and refer to uh, the, something as the same thing throughout. Um, don't use different synonyms. Again, that may confuse the translators and lead to potential mistranslations. Um, we'd also say um, try and eliminate the use of, or not eliminate, potentially reduce uh, the use of um, location specific um, content. That could be um, dates, it could be locations, references to specific UK culture, for example, that is going to be more difficult to translate, of course. The linguist will need to transcreation approach to find the equivalent in their target market. And again, that could cause some confusion during the market review stage. Um, so where possible, try and make sure everything is inclusive as possible in, in global content. Um, also, it's really important just to remind everyone, all parties, uh, both internal and external, whether that's the translators, the, the translation company, the copywriters, the markets, to um, make sure everyone is um, creating copy and translating that copy and improving that copy in line with the global guidelines. We have seen it before in the past when the copywriters and the translators have adhered to the guidelines and the local market hasn't or vice versa, and it leads to a lot of rigmarole. Um, so um, definitely just reiterate to everyone to follow the rules um, throughout the process, and that will make the reviews and sign off much more simple. Um, and one last point that's not actually on the board, but I think is really worth mentioning, is encouraging collaboration um, with your local markets and actually asking them to approve the English content before it goes for translation. Um, this may seem like an extra step, but in our experience, it's a really valuable one and it's really worth taking the time to do that. It can save a lot of time and your market can be 100% happy that that content is going to be relevant for their market before it's translated. The translator can then take that and make sure it's in line with the right style and translate it accurately and stylistically appropriately for the culture. Um, but it means that the, the markets have the say on what their, the copy is for their market. So we definitely recommend that as a really useful step if, if time allows within your, uh, within your processes. 
Right, so step three is all about selecting the right approach for translation. Um, it's really important to consider the right level of localization for your content. Um, in translation, there is no one size fits all approach. Um, instead, there's a whole range of options and possibilities depending on the content and how you're going to use it. Um, to help you identify the best approach for each type of content, my advice will be consider the level of emotional impact and engagement you want your audience to have from this content and share that with your translation partner. So what is the crux? What is the aim? What are you trying to achieve from this content? Um, from here, your translation partner will be able to recommend the best level of service. Um, as I said, there are lots of different options. And um, as you can see on the screen, this is um, what we call context localization spectrum that helps us work out uh, what is the best approach for our client's content. It's all about the creativity and emotional impact that, con that content will generate. Um, on starting at the left hand side, you can see um, we have uh, where, where, where um, content is requires low impact. We've got services like machine translation or light translation, which is a translation completed by just one linguist. Um, as we enter the middle and to the right, we have um, services that will support a more highly creative and emotional impact approach. So professional translation. Um, um, which is translation and proofreading, transcreation, and also copywriting. Obviously, we don't have time to go through all of these today, but I'm going to go through um, the two most ones that will be relevant for marketing content um, in most cases, which are pro translation and transcreation. So, what is trans professional translation? So, for marketing content, we recommend um, prof a professional translation approach. Um, we recommend this is carried out for content like blogs, brochures, websites, emailers, social media content. Um, this process is carried out by a team made up of a professional translator and a second linguist who will act as proofreader, both of whom will possess experience in your sector and marketing communications. Um, they will work together to develop translations that are fluent, accurate, effective and culturally appropriate in terms of the style and tone. They will have some degree of localization in them, but overall with a translation and proofreading approach, the translations will respect the content and the messaging of the original while still being in line with your style and tone requirements for each market. Um, the more emotive and impactful and creative the content, however, more creative and thinking time and adaptation time will be needed to sufficiently localize the text for the target market and to meet its purpose. And that's where transcreation comes in. So transcreation is carried out by a team of specialist creative translators and proofreaders who will take an English text and will fully adapt, revise, edit the content, localize the content. They'll move away from the source text to create a fully localized piece that reads like an original and works successfully in your target market and aligns with your brand, your aims, and really generates the impact you're looking for, taking into account emotional resonance of the target market. Um, a transcreation approach is best used for creative and emotional content, um, high impact content, advertising communications, strap lines, any puns and idioms that need localizing. It's also really useful for magazine articles and literature that are written in a certain style, especially more luxury magazines. So this is when we would uh, suggest a transcreation approach. Um, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, most marketing communications do generally require a hybrid approach. Um, there might, for example, be a really kind of high impact strap line or slogan within a more standard marketing piece. So your translation provider should be able to advise the best approach to kind of um, handle all of that and um, meet the aims uh, that you're looking for. So the difference between transcreation and translation can be fully hard to understand. Um, so I've got an example here to show you just how transcreation goes one step further than translation and really takes into account language, emotion and culture to adapt the text, uh, moving away from the English, the original English to better suit the target market. I decided to look at the really catchy McDonald's slogan from a few years ago. Um, it also had really catchy music. Um, I'm loving it. Um, 
And I think this is a really clear example of how cultural differences have been taken into account to ensure the slogan resonates with the different audiences. Um, in these examples, US, um, Brazilian, Portuguese, and uh, German. Here we have um, on the left, the original English, I'm loving it, which is clearly a very colloquial, laid back, friendly, almost slang approach. Um, this obviously worked well for the American culture and also similar cultures such as um, uh, Canada, the UK, um, Australia and um, New Zealand. In the middle, um, we have uh, the Brazilian Portuguese variant, Amamuito Todo Iso, um, which is essentially means in English, I very much love all this. Um, this is obviously very much more expressive, especially with the use of the intensifier very much. And um, this really reflects the style of Latin American language. On the left, on the right, sorry, we have the um, German variant, which is again different from the original in terms of meaning and tone. It's much more direct and literally means I love it, um, which reflects the direct and more logical approach of the German language and culture. So I hope this provides a bit more insight into how transcreation works when translating strap lines and headlines and how it's different, but also complements and enhances um, translation. Right, we're on to our final step now, uh, which is all about um, how to capture your preferred style, tone and terminology during translation and making sure that we're putting in resources to um, ensure these are captured. Um, for creative marketing projects, it's so important that your translation partner understands your company and any specific terminology and style you use in your communications. Um, this will further enhance the, the quality of the, the translations produced by the linguists and will also reduce the, uh, the time you spend uh, on market reviews at the end. Um, obviously, because a large amount of your specifics will already be introduced in the translation. Um, to kick off this step, um, firstly, we recommend as much collaboration as possible between your translation partner and your local market teams. This is something we're touching on in a lot more detail in our second webinar coming up in May. Um, but as a quick example now, briefing calls, project kickoff calls, and also feedback calls between the local markets and the translation teams are really, really useful for ensuring everyone is speaking from the same hymn sheet. As the client, um, there are a couple of key resources you can provide your translation partner with to ensure they help, help them speak your language. Um, these include your company brand guidelines, style guidelines, tone of voice documents. Um, additional reference materials, including the original creative briefs that you put together for the original, the original campaign. Um, any websites with associated um, uh, links to your brand and your services and products you're going to be marketing. And also um, the assets themselves in the original format so the links can see the entire context. Um, also, really useful, if you have any existing translations um, you're looking to reuse, please do share those with the translation company. Um, they should be able to incorporate them into their translation memory and also uh, share those with the linguists. Once the translation company has all of those uh, materials, they can then assemble resources that will help their linguists do the translations in the right way. Um, for example, set up localization guidelines. So taking all of the style and tone guidelines and information you've given us and putting together a market specific brief for each uh, of the linguists to use. Um, setting up translation memories to store content for future, future use and, and reference and also storing any content you've shared with us that you'd like to reuse. And finally, setting up glossaries of key terms. So reviewing the documentation you've given us and putting together your key terms and our suggested translations for approval, which our linguists can then use time after time. So all parties collaborating together to set up these resources at the start of the process will really enhance the quality of the end product, eliminate, eliminate um, long delays of reviewing and essentially to better international marketing. 
So I've talked about um, four key steps um, we recommend taking for translation. Um, and I'd like to go through some of the benefits of those, putting those things in place. So first of all, time and cost efficiencies. This is all from the translation memory your translation partner will be putting together for you. Um, obviously, being able to reuse content comes with uh, faster translations and also some savings if they can reuse bits. Um, less internal hassle from your team with having a really useful translation partner in place. Um, this means that you, they will be look, able to look after the process from start to finish, leaving you to handle your jobs. Um, with a streamlined translation and review process, uh, you'll be able to produce multilingual marketing communications much quicker, uh, meaning your campaigns can be launched uh, much faster. Um, the collaboration you've initiated between your translation partner and your local markets will really allow your global marketing teams to buy into the process of translation and will really make sure everything is running smoothly. Again, we'll be talking a lot more about that in a few weeks time. And also, you'll have built up a great relationship with your translation partner through all this collaboration. Um, they will essentially, um, in an ideal world, um, this is what we like to do anyway at Comtech, they, want, they should be operating as an extension of your team. So always there to offer advice, updates, share ideas and best practice to make the process always, always better. Um, and through all of this, more effective translations will be produced, um, which will mean better engagement from your customers and an improved global reputation, which, as we all want, leads to increased sales and the growth of your brand of business. And everyone is happy as a result. Perfect. Well, I've been through my four key steps and uh, the benefits you can receive. Uh, we've got time for some questions now. Um, I'm just, I've got a few questions in the chat. I'm just going to uh, have a look at those. So we have a question from Dave Hayward. Um, so this is a really good question, actually. Um, is selecting a translator that uses technology a bit of a double-edged sword? How can I tell that content has gone through the appropriate checks versus being pushed through a bot? Seems like a space where it's very easy for firms to BS it. Um, very true. Um, we would always say uh, opt for a semi-automated approach to translation. Um, as much as technology is useful, you can never replace a human being, especially in marketing content. It always needs that human touch. We would always recommend um, human translators being involved. So that's having a human translator and a human proofreader working as a team to create the content according to the brief. Using translation technology does help, however. Um, working within a translation environment allows the linguist to access all the reference material and previous translations that have been approved. So in a translation memory platform, um, linguists will be able to um, reuse previous content, ensuring it's consistent with um, previous materials. We don't necessarily want to disconnect in terms of style and tone. They'll also be able to use um, QA functions to check their work for style, uh, spelling, grammar, consistency, so on and so forth. So technology is a really useful in part to, a part to enhance the process. And I'm sure you've all heard about um, the rise of machine translation, which is really useful in areas like technical translation, um, financial translation, there's lots of numbers, lots of repeated terms. Um, however, for uh, marketing translation, it's always so important to get as much as possible the human input, primarily with a little bit of technology to help along the side. So I hope that helped answer your question, Dave. Um, very happy to chat later with any other um, information. Right, we have another question. Thank you, Aspasia. Um, so how can we ensure we are on brand and we do the best for the market we want to transcreate if we do not have internal language support, for example, picking linguists, giving briefs or guidelines? Um, it's, um, I think it's really, um, it really, there's, the, I think the, the best answer is really having that external, that trust and that external language partner. There are lots of things the, um, the transition partner can do for you without having the, um, local market support. For example, um, we would recommend in the situation if you don't have any internal support, we would recommend really doing a detailed onboarding process with your transition partner. The more they learn about your company, and how you like to speak, the better. Um, this will then allow them to 
select the best lingers for your project um, according to what your aims are and your industry um, and they will take charge of the briefing um, process. What we would say is potentially um, if we don't have the internal support is doing a briefing process to the translation company and their um, linguists through a kickoff call to really explain um, from the original market how you um, market your or talk about your brand in, in that market. That will primarily form the basis of all future translations. Um, if there are no market specifics at the moment, the linguist will then be able to inform, inform that approach. Um, and one thing your translation partner can do, for example, is do additional quality checks on the process. When our markets don't have, uh, when some clients, for example, don't have local market support, we often do two rounds of proofreading. And for one client in particular, we've trained um, so a, a, a team of linguists who are actually the translator and proofreader, but they will do the final checks according to the market specifics to make sure that everything is, is, is correct. But your translation partner will have, will be able to give you lots of guidance on um, what kind of things to think about in the briefing process and guidelines. Um, we have these documents that we show our clients. So um, that's something that is, is certainly able to, to help. Perfect. Right, I think we um, have received all of our questions. So thank you very much, everyone, for... Um, oh, we've got one more popped in. Um, maybe it's not the right place to ask for this. Uh, this is a question from Dorota. Uh, maybe it's not the right place to ask this, but as you mentioned, machine translation with post-editing, how do you charge for machine translation and post-editing? That is a very good question. Um, that uh, is really dependent on the content, the company, um, the linguists. A lot of companies do it differently, actually. Um, we tend to um, do a go from a hybrid approach. So using machine translation alongside the translation memory and carrying out post editing and potentially proofreading, depending on the content, um, to ensure that it is as, it is, as, a, as um, a accurate as possible stylistically refined as possible, but making use of the time and cost efficiencies given by machine translation. Um, so we personally generally charge on a per word rate. I know lots of other companies charge on hourly rate. Um, translators as well also charge um, a mix of those two. So um, if you'd like um, any um, information on machine translator Dorota, we've got your email address and I'll be able to send through any um, some information to you. So I hope that was helpful. Does anybody else have any final questions? No. Oh, we've got one more. I'm looking for a good machine translation. Would you advise one? Um, this, again, really depends on the type of content. Um, one thing with machine translation engines is they're really dependent on the content um, and it's based on um, who they've been made by, what kind of industry they've been tailored towards. Um, there are lots of um, there are lots of really useful engines on the market. Deepul is one. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they're four of the really big ones. At Comtech, we use all of them and we use all of them for different things. Um, some are better for certain languages, some are better for certain types of content. Um, Amazon, for example, being a um, an e-commerce company, they're very good at, e they, they, their engine has been trained in lots of e-commerce translation. Deepal is perhaps uh, has more of a technical lean and um, some engines, the, pe the companies who build the engines might uh, have a focus on certain languages, not others. So there is, again, no one size fits all approach, um, but their websites um, have lots of information on which languages they they are they are really good for. And um, again, Katarina, if you'd like any advice on machine translation, please do feel free to get in touch with us um, um, via my email and uh, I'll be happy to kind of give you some advice on our experiences. And finally, um, is there any, from Karishma, is there any data research can help with understanding the most popular languages written or spoken? Yes, there is. There are loads of studies out there. Um, there is, for example, the NIMSI study, which is one that we refer to quite often in the translation industry. Um, there's also the census as well. Um, we actually have some data on this. So if you would like a copy of one of our guides, uh, which is about how to prepare for translation, um, and first embark on your international journey that has the list of um, the top uh, 10, I think, 
10, I believe, languages spoken in the um, in the world. So lots of different um, sources out there. NIMSI is one, it's really good for uh, market research on translation languages. The general sense is the other. So I hope that helped. Perfect. Well, I think we've run out of time for today. So thank you everyone for all your questions. I hope my answers were useful. Um, before we finish, um, I'd just like to show you on screen a couple of guides we have that are available on our website for you to download for free that might be really useful. Um, first of all, on screen now, we have our um, guide called Delivering Effective Multilingual Marketing Campaigns, which contain a lot of the tips we've spoken about today, plus loads more. So that's available on our website. Please feel free to download it and let me know if you have any further questions or any, like any further advice. Um, we also have another guide which might be useful. It's called Six Steps to Translate and Localize Your Website. This is all about the same principles, but focusing on much more website translation and making sure your website is as impactful for your audience as possible. Um, there are also loads of other guides and case studies at our website. There's also videos, webinars, so please feel free to have a look, download any of those. And if you have any further questions, um, please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, we'll be in touch in the next few weeks with a recording of this webinar and also with a link to, sign up to our following webinar in the uh, Create, Formulate, Translate series, um, which is all about putting into place an effective um, review process for translation um, and engaging your local market teams and the translators and making sure everyone's working together to achieve, achieve the same goal. Um, that will be hosted by my colleague Elliot Kane, who has been fielding all your questions today, and it will also take place on the 18th of May. Uh, so watch this space, we will let you know about that um, very soon. So thank you so much everyone um, for joining our webinar today. I really hope it was useful and we've shown you some of the benefits of putting in place a really great translation process alongside some of the tips to help you do that. Um, and we look forward to um, hearing from you and seeing you all develop great translation processes and getting some really good benefits from that. Thank you everyone very much. <laughs>